I am a carnivore. What does that even mean? Am I crazy? Is it something that you might consider doing in your life? All these questions and more will be answered in this video, but let me tell you a story to start. A while ago, right? Ever since I can remember, I've always wanted to eat, eat in a healthy way, right? I remember the first step for me was to eliminate processed foods, something that we all pretty much know, right? We shouldn't really eat processed foods, we should eat more whole, whole foods, right? That's something that we generally can agree upon. And about 10 years ago, that was like step one for me, right? I did that, right? And then I was like, okay, what more is there, right? Surely there's better foods to eat and worse foods to eat. And I was told different things by different people and no one seemed to be able to agree on one consensus point to kind of test, tell me, okay, this is good and this is bad. One person would tell me, oh, this stuff, this is fine. Oh, fruit, fruit is great for you. But this guy would say, oh no, fruits are oh, too much sugar in fruit, you can't eat fruit. And things like that, with like bread and pasta, potatoes and carbs and everyone had their own opinion to say about something and it was equally convincing, right? And it was equally sort of healthy looking, right? You see healthy looking vegans, you see healthy looking people on paleo, on keto, on carnivore, on no carb, whatever, whatever diet you want to say, you can see healthy people on there, right? But I believe that's because of the step one that I talked about just now, right? The step one being no processed foods, more whole foods, right? All of these diets, what they have in common is that they eliminate processed foods and they rely on this kind of ancient knowledge of whole foods, this ancient diet of whole foods. We never had processed foods in the past. Look back 100, 200 years ago, that didn't exist. All the processed foods we have today are pretty new. Our bodies aren't used to that stuff. And so that's why you see the obesity epidemic in places like America and most first world countries, you see that. Obesity, diabetes, cancer, and heart, heart attacks and heart disease. That's why you see that. Because we're not used to this food. It's not meant to be consumed by us. It's just for the profit, right? They make it taste nice. And so, oh, we don't care about the, the customer's health as long as they buy our food, right? as long as you make it as addictive as possible and as sweet and as, you know, stimulating on the tongue as possible. That's all we care about. And I was obsessing over this idea of what it is to eat the perfect diet. And people around me didn't care. Like friends and family, they didn't care. Like, oh, I'm just going to eat what I eat when I eat. And I'll eat what I'm craving. And, you know, I'll eat vaguely healthy, but I don't really care that much. But I cared. I was like trying to find each different one. I tried these different things, right? I tried veganism. I tried paleo. I tried keto. I tried these different things and tried to see which one worked for me. And I struggled to see the logic behind each one. Like it would make sense. Veganism kind of makes sense. No carb kind of makes sense. Keto kind of makes sense. Carnival kind of makes sense. Like all this stuff. I struggled to find a consensus to, to like say, okay, that makes more sense than all the rest, right? Until this point, right? At some point, I stumbled across the trend of the carnival diet, right? And that just made sense to me, right? And the logic behind it was like very simple. It was like, look back in the past. What did we have access to? Mostly. We hunted meat and we got fruit when it was available. Throughout the ice ages, there was no plant matter that we could consume readily. It was just meat. We hunted mammoths and big, you know, deer-like creatures. And we hunted animals to eat. And for long periods of time, we had that. Inuits, the people who live in the Arctic regions that don't have access to any vegetables or fruit, they eat just meat and they survive very healthily, right? And if we look back across our culture, that's mostly what we ate. If we could, we got meat, first of all. That was a primary source of nutrients for us. And then it was, you know, stuff like grains and vegetables because, you know, there were so many people around that we couldn't feed all of them with the meat that we had available. But the primary stuff we had was meat. That was what everyone desired. The best day in your life in the tribe was when you brought home the meat. Those were your favorite days. You brought home the hunt, the kill, for the tribe to eat, right? That's the best feeling. To gather honey from the, the beehives, right? When they're not necessarily in beehives like farmed, but they're natural beehives in the trees. And you find fruit in these tropical regions and depending on where you are, that's what you have access to. 
meats and fruits and things like that. And that just made sense to me, right? To have a primary diet of meat and then to supplement that with fruit and honey when that's available as well. We've always had access to this throughout the entirety of human civilization. Pre-agriculture, pre-industrialization, any development of humankind at all, right? Because all of those points are relatively recent in human history, right? We, we only recently industrialized things so we can mass produce food. We only recently started farming so we can mass produce grains and flour and things like that. So we didn't have bread for the majority of humankind, right? The majority of human history, sorry, right? We didn't really have many potatoes and things like that. We didn't have many carb-like vegetables, right? Vegetables, if we ever got them, some kind of root vegetables, things like that, maybe mushrooms, that was in times of dire circumstances when we couldn't get any meat, we couldn't get any fruit. That was what we had as a backup, right? Not optimal food, but a backup. It'll do for now, right? Us humans are like cockroaches. We'll survive despite very harsh conditions. We can survive on really shit food, right? Primary example, all these first world countries, America and all that, all these people are incredibly on the brink of death, but they hang on. They look like balloons, like whales, but they hang on somehow, eating all of that crap, right? It's incredible. But the optimal health is to be found with the carnivore diet, and that is what I came to believe in. And that is something that I just finally was able to be at peace with. This is the diet that I'm going to live the rest of my life with. And so today, I actually put out a post on a forum. I've been on the carnivore diet for three years. Ask me any questions, whatever you like, and I'll answer them in the comments below. So today is going to be a read through of those comments of people, what, what people ask me and what the answers I have for those kind of questions. If you're curious about carnivore, give this video a listen. I'm sure you will have your questions answered about the ins and outs of what a carnivore diet looks like. I have three years of experience, so I can tell you a lot about what this is like for me today. Okay, so I'm going to go through these comments in no particular order. I'm going to read each one out and tell you what I think about them. So, first one. How do I not cope when I eat sweets or when I come past an unhealthy drink? Okay, this is just about mindset, right? I've talked in videos before about the mentality of zero is easier than one. Just kind of eliminate that stuff from your lifestyle, right? Just identify with the fact that you're no longer going to eat that, right? I talked in, I think, the previous video about eating in moderation, right? Oh, it's all healthy in moderation, right? And I, I like extremely disagree with that stuff, right? Because look, don't pretend it's healthy. By all means, have that beer, have that cigarette, but know that it's bad for you, right? Admit that it's bad for you and accept it, right? If you can accept that, then fine, have that, right? But don't pretend it's going to be good for you, right? So if you want to eliminate it, just eliminate it. Do zero rather than one, and that'd be a lot easier for you. It's just a men mentality, right? Identify yourself as someone who doesn't eat that kind of stuff. Like a smoker will identify himself as someone who doesn't smoke, and that's how he is able to quit smoking. Next one. I'm about four days deep into a very strict carnival diet, and I'm getting very heavy cravings for fruits or just something sweet in general. I'm not really deep hunger, and when I eat fatty meat, it stops tasting good, just cravings. It's just, is there any way to combat this or... Just persevere through it until it stops. Okay, I think that's completely normal to crave fruit. I think at the start, when people transition from a very sweet-based diet and they eat a lot of sweets, then of course you're going to crave sweet things. I think fruit is definitely not the worst thing you could eat, right? Sometimes people like to eat a lot of fruit in the day. I tend to eat a little bit less fruit than I used to, but absolutely there were points in my carnivore like journey, like I eat kind of a modified carnivore diet, so I used to eat a lot of fruit in the day. But I found that the amount of fruit that I ate took away from the amount of hunger I felt for meat, right? So meat is like the priority in the day for me, right? The, the meal that I really care about is the meat, right? But if you're eating a lot of fruit, don't worry about it. It won't do you any harm. It won't like negatively affect you that much, okay? So I'd be fine with that. Have you gone ill at any time? And if so, what's all of illness? Thank you for your contribution. Okay, um, yeah, you get ill like normal, like... I've had maybe a, a, like one or two stomach bugs in the time that I've started carnivore. Like as usual, right? Like when you eat some old food or something like that, you get that kind of stuff. I've had like colds and like, you know, sniffles, things like that. When I go to, when I go traveling and things like that, when I meet people and mingle around in like public places, you, you tend to get ill when you travel like that. And once I'm rested up, I tend to recover pretty quickly. So 
it's not really that different to to you know non carnivore diet. I'd say you generally feel a bit healthier, and I'd say you get as ill as you would do normally. Like I don't think it's that different. I'd say you probably do get less ill, but not to an extent that I've kind of noticed specifically. Right? I tend to live generally healthy anyway, and so I didn't really see much of a difference in that. Next one. Carnival sounds like a perfect option, but it is on the pricey side, especially for all the meat in my area. So I don't think I can go full on carnival. But I have been eating chicken and rice every day for the past three months. And r I know that rice is not good for you, but I've tried to just do chicken and I felt worse after that. So I just stick to that. But what's your opinion on eating rice and other light carbs? I have quit carbs altogether. That's what I did when I started carnival. I did like a month of just carnival and then I added fruit and honey afterwards. Um, yeah, carbs, complex carbs like rice, pasta, potatoes, things like that. I think they're so good for you. I think you can do without them. The carbs I do eat, I do find that they do boost my like general energy for like workouts and things like that. So that is fruit and honey. And that I don't eat that much of anyway. Like maybe like this. Okay. <laughs> This amount seems like a lot, but maybe a little for people who eat a lot of fruit, right? I eat maybe four or five, maybe six pieces of fruit in a day, right? Five a day, right? That's what the government recommends anyway. Like, I don't think that's a bad amount to eat of fruit, right? So maybe two oranges and three apples or three bananas and three apples, something like that, right? With the meat being on the pricey side, I tend to go for cheaper cuts of meat, right? So things that are cheap, mints, Organ meat, so like liver, kidney, heart, things like that. Ox tongue is a, a favorite of mine. Very, very cheap. And all these things are people that, you know, things that people don't generally desire a lot. There's not a lot of demand for it. So they sell it off for very cheap, right? Not a lot of people will buy an ox tongue. So they're going to sell it very cheap so they can get rid of it. And mince is like made up of all the kind of trimmings of the meat that they can't really sell. So once they cut out the steaks, the stuff that's left over, it's still good meat. It's still really healthy as well. I'd argue it's even healthier than the steak because it includes all the kind of cartilagey, kind of like chewy bits that have the nutrients that the normal steak meat doesn't have. Like all the, the collagen and other nutrients in there that normal steak meat doesn't have. And that for me comes up to about three or four pounds a day, maybe a bit more than that, maybe, but not a lot in the grand scheme of things, right? And in terms of taste, I would say the way I've done it is I've experimented over time and I cook my meat in like a big stew with like a bone broth and that really flavors it and really gives it some, you know, flavor, right? And as you go along with this journey, you'll find different meats and different tastes along with that. And so all these different organ meats have a flavor to them and, and a really nice texture you can really get into. And it's it's not as boring as it seems, right? It, it might seem boring. Like a lot of people look at my diet and think, surely you get bored of eating meat every single day. It genuinely I look forward to every single meal like I'm hungry right now I'm looking forward to going back home and eating some food it genuinely is something that is fun for me in my life right it's not it's not as if I'm trying to you know eliminate fun from my life for the sake of health it genuinely I feel great on it and I, I genuinely look forward to the meals I eat how long did it take to feel the benefits of the carnivore diet right in my mind because I ate healthy before it didn't feel that different but there are subtle changes right you'll you'll kind of one day when you're like deep into it, you'll think, oh, it's been a, a long time since I felt bloated. I've not felt bloated since I started this diet. I, I'm getting strength really quickly. I, I just feel like a very a clear feeling in my mind. Like I don't feel like I need to take a nap in the afternoon. These little changes are subtle, but you'll notice and you'll never want to go back, right? And when you cheat, you'll feel it, okay? that That's the opposite way around, right? Like when you get into it, like you kind of slowly accumulate the benefits. But when you cheat, if you spend one day eating like a bunch of carbs, then you feel it You're like, oh my goodness, is this what I felt like all the time before this diet? God, and you will never want to cheat, right? You'll never want to go back. That's how good it is. Next one, thoughts on carnivore diet plus aiming to gain weight in muscle mass. Oh goodness, this is the best way to do it, right? I think initially you will like lose a bit of like visceral fat because like all the the stuff like the awful foods that you've consumed over the years and like the stuff like the the visceral fat is like the fat around your organs so the fat that you don't necessarily see on your body but like it's inside of you right for me i lost a bit of weight when i got into carnival because of like i, I feel like that kind of weight just like flushed away and all the other like bulls in your body just like flushes away when you eat like a very clean diet like this is very good and then gaining strength and muscle becomes very very easy it's really good like 
once you put your mind to a target in the gym, like, oh, I want to bench more, I want to squat more, eating like this, you'll, you'll have intense work. If, as long as you have intense workouts and you feel very sore afterwards and you really feel like you worked out hard, your muscle will be recovering all the time. Like, I never worry about protein, right? Think about that, right? I eat meat all day. I never worry about, I, I know that I'm hitting my protein targets, right? Like, I, I don't track any of my food. I just know. Like it's 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 a no brainer. I ate meat all day, right? So I never worry about that, and that's going to be one of the best ways you can get one of the best diets you can get for building muscle. So for building muscle and like even keeping it on, like I've I've been injured for like months at a time and not gone to the gym, and still get compliments from people. Right? People say, "Oh, yo, your arms have grown, bro. You look really lean. You look insane, bro. You look really built, bro." And they like compliments on like my my jaw even and things like that. Like this is, it's a really nice way of eating just to be able to maintain a general level of health. Like you don't need to do much on this diet to look very healthy. It's insane. Do you know roughly your daily calorie intake? No idea. I don't track that kind of stuff as I've talked about in previous videos. I think that's a bit of a calorie tracking doesn't work, right? It's, it's a bit of a like majoring in minor activities, that kind of thing I like. Go watch that video if you want to know more about that. Do you combine carnivore with intermittent fasting? How many meals do you have, etc.? Okay, so not really. I tend to eat, I tend to get up in the morning and do a bunch of work first. I tend to like doing some work. I, I get to my laptop and I start typing whatever comes to my mind. It might be a script for a video, something else. But after that, after that hour, I start eating straight away. And I pretty much eat until the moment I go to bed or like maybe an hour before I go to bed, right? That's the only time I, I stop eating, right? The only the only restriction I have on my times of eating is when I eat like fruit or honey. And I generally only eat that when I go to the gym, like before I go to the gym or like a, like a heavy workout, like a hike or something like that. I think a bit of fruit is nice to like get my energy levels a little bit higher on like glucose and things like that. The thing is, your brain is better fueled by like ketones and things like this, which is more found in a, a faster state or when you're eating meat, right? When you're eating meat, it doesn't really affect the, the fasting effects that you get or the fasting benefits you get from fasting, if, if that makes sense, right? So when you're eating meat, it's pretty, your body pretty much treats it like you are fasting, right? Like almost to that, that kind of extent. Hi, I am on day three of trying the carnivore diet for the first time. I have a few questions. Instead of having, um, Instead of having all steaks, is having some beef mints a good idea and a healthy way to keep costs down? Yes, absolutely, as I talked about before. It's very cheap and also I think it's healthier than steaks. With honey, does it matter what type and how much do you have? Honey, I like to get organic and raw. So organic means there's less pesticides in the honey itself and raw means it's not filtered and not pasteurized. Filtering, it gets rid of like the nice, like, you know, parts of the, the honeycomb that are good, good and healthy for you. And the fact that it's not pasteurized, pasteurized means they, they heat the honey to get rid of all the bacteria. And that also gets rid of all the goodness in the honey, right? When you have like the, the, the probiotic nature of it and all that. So try and get a raw honey. And that's what that means. Okay. Organic and raw. How much do I have? Not a lot, maybe a tablespoon or two a day. And I have it with meat, like honey and meat doesn't seem like a, a good combo, but have some honey on your steak and you will never go back. Honestly, it's the best thing, the best like food discovery I've had in my entire life. It's fantastic. Try it out. I tried carnivore for five days. Couldn't longer. Felt like shit. I trained heavily at the gym. I'm into kickboxing. Ate fruits before workouts. Didn't feel anything. My workouts were absolute trash. I tried to get my electrolytes in, which is hard. And supplementing meanwhile. Lost weight way, lost weight way too fast, which I don't want to do since I am six foot four and size is what I'm focusing on right now. What could I do wrong? Okay, I need some more details here. I think this is a... The summary is basically you're trying carnivore, but you're finding like you can't do it because you feel like shit and your, tra your workouts feel like trash. Okay, low energy, like five days isn't much of a long time to kind of get adjusted to a new diet like this. May I don't know how differently you were eating before, so that context needs to be kind of said here. But I think keep going like you are, keep eating fruits, keep eating meats, and then you should be able to adjust to it. I don't think you'll have many issues gaining weight once you are fully on the carnivore diet. Next one, how do you deal with eating right before bed? I don't really, I spend about like an hour reading before I go to bed, so I don't really keep track of like when I eat before I go to bed. So that's the answer. 
If I end up doing that, I'll end up sweating through the night and waking up through the night due to body digestion. Okay, then don't do that. <laughs> have to at least have to eat at least two hours before bed or my sleep is less efficient, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Yeah, just don't do that. That's all. <laughs> just keep yeah, just keep some time before you go to bed and like two hours is pretty reasonable. That's fine. In what quantities do you eat where you can also meet calorie goals as well? For example, I need 2,600 calories. How do you meet that requirement with a fair budget and not spending the whole day eating? Thanks in advance. Okay, well, I don't track calories, but the eating thing, you will spend more time eating because meat is a chewier food, which is good for the jaw right if you want to look max if you want to have like a, a well-developed jaw and you don't want like to have to wear braces eat meat because that will like strengthen your jaw and align your teeth i know this is this sounds weird but the food you eat and how hard you chew affects the way that your skull is shaped and the way that your jaw is shaped okay so eating tougher meat means you have a better looking face right i know that sounds so strange but look back at the skull records of these ancient civilizations where they had like loads of meats and things like that and they had straight teeth there were no need for like braces and things like that because they didn't have like all these softer foods like like porridge and like you know the baby food type foods that are very easy to eat like bread and just like ham and like stuff that isn't chewy right if you have chewier foods it's better for you you might spend longer eating but I don't mind that. I eat while I work and things like that. I just, I just make time for it because I care about that kind of stuff. If you really don't want to spend too much time eating, then eat more mints because that's kind of like pre-chewed meat in a sense. You'll still need to chew that, but less so, right? So yeah, in terms of tracking, I just eat when I'm hungry and I stop eating when I'm full. That's about it. I, I eat very intuitively. Again, look at that video if you want to see it. I think it's called tracking calories or counting calories doesn't work or something like that. And honestly, I get compliments on my like jaw development as well. Like people say, oh, your jaw has grown, bro. Like <laughs> over time, people tell me that my jaw has grown, presumably because I'm eating tougher foods and spending more time eating. Next one, how to incorporate organs in because they taste like shit. I don't want something complicated, just something easy that I don't have to worry about taking uh, a while to do. Okay. I've heard about people just like chopping up organs and eating them like in really bite-sized amounts with like a cup of, cup of water, like a pill, something like that. I've heard some people do that. But to be honest with you, it just, you get used to it, right? For me, I get used to it, right? I chop up liver and kidney and heart and things like that. I put it in a stew and you get used to these different flavors. And it's a nice thing to have different flavors in your meat because yes, just muscle meat, just steak can get boring. And these different flavors are interesting to include in your diet as well. And the way I cook meat is in a big stew with bone broth, very good flavor developer or like booster. And so I recommend that if you can cook in that way. Next, you said sometimes eggs. Is there a reason you don't consume like five to 10 eggs per meal? I switched to carnivore. I've almost tripled my egg intake, just curious. Just money. Like I would eat eggs if they didn't cost as much in the UK right now. Like I tried to get good quality eggs, which are like organic in the grocery stores. If I can't get access to like farm eggs, right? Some, some t areas there are like farmers who have chickens roaming around in like grassy areas like this and those are like natural like the most natural form of eggs you can get right and those i can trust i'm like yes that's good not factory farm not like pesticides not only like you know corn fed chicken as opposed to like chicken that's naturally fed on like grubs and worms in the grass the stuff that they're not normally meant to eat right healthy chickens happy chickens allowed to graze around that's good eggs right so I like getting those eggs when I can. Like I went to the Peak District last weekend and I got a bunch of eggs, brought them home, ate those happily. But other than that, the organic eggs you can get in the grocery stores, they're not as good, I don't think, and they're more expensive. So it's just money at this point. And I don't really think it's like absolutely like critical that I get eggs. So that's why I just go without and just start, I eat meat anyway, right? And so I'm not too worried about that. So if, you, if you're worried about eggs, then don't worry too much. I, I think it's fine if you just eat meat. If you can't get eggs, by all means eat them. Very quick and easy meal, by the way, as well. Eggs, you can cook them in like two minutes. What's your weight and height? Uh, I'm 80 or like just under, right? Height, I think I'm like 5'10". My mate, I don't, I've never like measured myself, but my mate's 5'10". 
and we're the same height. Do you lose or gain weight on carnivore? As I said, you you might start by losing a bit of weight, but just because of all like the, the crap that's in you, and then you'll gain weight easily. If you train hard, the muscle will come on very quickly. I had a hard time doing carnivore and trying to bulk, so I stopped. Currently 6'1 and 210 LBs, pounds. I want to hit 220 before I cut, then I'll probably go back to carnivore. I'm at 15% body fat, expecting to go back to 10%. Okay. So, as I said before, it might be the visceral fat that's like deep inside amongst your organs that you might need to get rid of. That's the weight that you might be losing, so don't worry about that. You will get lean. You will get really lean on carnival. Trust me, it's really good. And you'll pack on muscle really quickly. So don't worry about a little bit of a dip when you first start carnival or little dips here and there when you're on carnival. That's, that's perfectly normal. Like your water weight will go up and down as you go throughout the day. And those fluctuations are normal as well. This one, I am on day four of carnival now. A lot of people like very new to carnival. That's really incredible. A few more questions. I'm finding it. A, I'm finding I'm drinking way more water and feeling thirsty more often. Is that standard thing on carnival? To be honest with you, I don't remember how much water I drank before carnival because it was so long ago. But I think that's fine. Like too much water won't kill you. Just look at the color of your piss and like that. If it's a healthy color, then that's fine. Honestly, if it's like, so what's a healthy color? Like if it's like very like deep yellow orange, that's you need, you're dehydrated. If it's like, you know, greenish, like lighter color, that's great. If it's completely clear, then you're drinking too much water. Okay. But it's, it's pretty hard to drink too much water. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Beef is your first choice of meat, but what about second and third choice? I really like wild meat. So like venison, which is deer meat. If I can get like pheasant or like partridge or whatever kind of bird that's like wild hunted is really something I like to get. But of course it's a little bit more expensive. So consider that. Um, I tend to eat less pork and chicken because what the carnival community recommends is like ruminant meats. So ruminant meats are animals that have multiple stomachs so they can digest plant foods in the appropriate way. And the nutrient profile is a bit different, right? So it's healthier to eat ruminant meats. These things include things like, you know, cow, sheep, so mutton, lamb, deer, even things like horse and bison, right? Like different cultures eat that kind of stuff. That's great as well. So yeah, I don't, I rarely eat chicken. I rarely eat pork. And to be honest, I prefer beef anyway. Also, is it healthy to have like 500 grams of mince a day as the backbone of my diet and then add other things for variety, steak, roasts, organs, and eggs? Yes, absolutely perfect. As I've described before in this video, that is a great way to do it. What are your testosterone levels at? I don't, I've not measured that yet, but I'm, I'm if I were to judge by my lifestyle, I think they're pretty high. Like I've have a, a very active lifestyle with a lot of like heavy workouts and things like that. And like judging by other kind of <laughs> thoughts or preoccupations I have in my mind, I think I have a very active, well, masculine drive, shall we say. And <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And as I said before, the differences are probably subtle in any case. I don't know. I know it's a vague answer, but I hope that helps. Roughly how much fruit do you think you eat a day? So as I said before, about four, five, six pieces. I don't really count, but I, I limit it to that kind of window of time that's around my workout. So either before my workout or after my workout, if I really feel like I need it after the workout, then yeah, like two apples, four bananas, that kind of thing, right? But in that like hour time before the gym, I will like absolutely scoff my face with fruits. I don't care how much I, as, like honestly, it depends how much fruit I have, right? If I have less fruit in the week, I'm like, okay, I need to ration this out a little bit, right? But if I have more, I'm like, oh yes, more fruits. I can eat more, right? But I limit it to that like one hour period time before the gym and that's that tends to help me best. How do I get into carnival as a 16 year old athlete? Wow, 16, fair enough. Where I don't have time off training to be able to get adjusted to the initial crash of energy when adjusting to the diet. Yeah, just, uh, I guess there's always an adjustment period when changing things this, dr this dramatically. But trust me, you will not regret it in the long run. It's honestly one of the best changes I've had in my life and keep eating more fruits. If you're an athlete and you're constantly tired and you constantly feel like you're drained of energy, eat more fruit in the day, especially before workouts and things like that. And you should be fine with this. And it looks like that's it. So I hope that helps you out. I know it's a bit of a longer video, but I want it to be more, more chill, more relaxed, more kind of conversational for those of you who are more curious about the carnival diet and the ins and outs, the details that I kind of go through in my life because I've been on it for so long and I'm used to all this stuff. And I want to give that knowledge to you guys to have and to keep. So thanks for watching. I hope that's helped. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. Knowledge is power and the power is yours.